Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. If things couldn't get any worse, I promise you they can and they will because the Giants are a steaming hot pile of horse shit. Now, Joe Judge may have said yesterday that this team is not a clown organization. This organization is something to be proud of and this and that. But when former employees and current employees are going at it on social media, it doesn't really show uh, that this this franchise is in the clown organization. To take it one step further, guys, two former players of the Giants, one of them who spent two years with Dave Gettleman in Carolina and two years with Dave Gettleman in New York, called him a terrible person and said that he is one of the worst GMs, an atrocious GM, in fact. And I'll read you the exact quote um, for this video, and we'll talk about kind of the interworkings of you know when players start to come out and say these things, and they're ex-players, so they have nothing to lose. The, these two guys are out of the NFL. They're, they don't have any stake in this team or anything, and they're not looking for jobs in the NFL. So it's like this is as unbiased as it gets, right? This is as legitimate and truthful as it gets. Two former players, one of them spent four years with uh, Gettleman on two different teams. Pretty clear indication what kind of a GM in person he is. But Anthony, before we dive into this just horrific, just sequence of events and I'm um, kind of I guess unleash some predictions here about where this team is going in the next couple uh, weeks how are you doing tonight my friend I'm doing all right um I'll say it's definitely official if it wasn't official already it's official now I am no longer the leader of the Joe Judge fan club like I have totally resigned from that I mean listen that speech that he went on yesterday at the press conference that was embarrassing um, just to hear him ramble, rant, and rave on so many different topics that had nothing to do with the Bears game. The Giants got their ass kicked by the Bears, and he said that the Bears are a good team. The Bears are not a good team. Don't lie. They're not a good team. They had They're their backup a bad team. quarterback. The in. Giants are just the worst team. They had their backup. They had so many backups out there. They have injuries. They're just not good, okay? And they got... They absolutely torched the New York Giants, who are arguably the worst team in football right now. Maybe just the Jaguars are worse because, man, the Jaguars are pretty bad, aren't they? But the Giants, man, super, super bad. And when you have all of these media personalities reacting to this 11-minute speech from Joe Judge, nothing positive, by the way. Nobody is coming into this press conference and giving it positive reviews. Everybody is just roasting the head coach of the New York Giants. So, yes, I'm absolutely resigned from that position of leader of the Joe Judge fan club. And then with Dave Gettleman, you know, we've heard a lot about him in recent weeks, right? We've heard a lot of hit pieces come out. We've read a lot of stuff about him, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. And now we're having former players chime in. It's not looking good. I, just really everything going on with the New York Giants right now from – the front office to the coaching staff, it just doesn't look good at all. It looks pretty bad, and I'm not happy about it. I, I'm actually really pissed off that this is the, the state of the New York Giants right now. This is embarrassing, and it's heartbreaking to see just how far the Giants have fallen. It's really, really disappointing, but let's get into these quotes, Alex, before I start crying myself to sleep. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it doesn't really get better. It only gets worse, and what Joe Judge said yesterday after the game, as you mentioned, um, you know, some people were like, I like what he said. He at least he showed some some passion, some energy. He's really been just, um, I, I guess, kind of delivering these half ass speeches where it's like, I got to look at the film. Um, I saw things that are positive. But the one thing that really grinded me the wrong way was to say his team fought hard, right? His team was well prepared and fought hard. As you said, the Giants got blown out, what, 29 to 3 by a, a, a bad Bears team, a bad Bears team that didn't have Khalil Mack, didn't have the Justin Fields, had Andy Dalton, and they posted 29 points on the Giants. Now, talk about good effort, hard fought, not a chance. I don't know what he was looking. I know he he has to say that, but hold yourself accountable. Like, be like, you know what? I take responsibility for this loss. I think that, you know, we could have done a better job doing this. I, I feel like I could have done this or done this. At least, like, shoulder the blame. It's, and then he goes he goes around, he circles back around to say there are free – and it's funny because troll atta- troll accounts on social media were actually posting this as if it was a, a, a fake thing, but it was real. It was – what he said was so fake sounding, was so appalling that I actually be- believed it was fake at first. He actually went out and said that former players call him all the time saying that they they pray and beg him – um, they, they, they would have taken less money to stay with the Giants. Tell me how any player would want to be on a team that is four and 12 now, four and 12, the worst team in football, maybe Jacksonville's worse, maybe, but 
They are arguably, with an easy argument, the worst team in football. Their their offense is averaging less than 10 points a game over the last five weeks. They've been blown out three or four times this season. Multiple times, teams have pulled their starting quarterback in the fourth quarter just to finish the game. Just to finish the game. Half of the Giants' production, they had 21 points, I think, five, six weeks ago, was in pure garbage time. All of their stats are in garbage time. Saquon Barkley had his first 100-yard rushing game in two years yesterday. What free agent out of their in their right mind what, that isn't on some foreign drug would say they want to be on the Giants right now for less and, and accept less money to be there? Who on earth is saying that? Maybe it's the reserve freaking kick kicks kicker specialist or specialist on special teams for Joe Judge's buddies. This guy's making 550k. He's like, I would I'll, I'll take the 300k. No, it's bullshit, guys. What Joe Judge sold us yesterday was a load of freaking shit, okay? It was a load of shit because none of that is true. Everything he said was fake. Everything he's told us has been false. And As a head coach, I still think he's actually a decent college talent evaluator, but as a head coach, he has failed us, man. And Anthony, we, you and I were, bigger, were just as big a supporter as anyone of Joe Judge, but I've learned one very important thing, and I think a lot of people have too. For the ones that called him out earlier, the ones that said, let's see it and wait, kudos to you for being proactive with that because the one thing I learned from Joe Judge's tenure here is that never listen to the shit that general managers and head coaches have to say no matter how rah-rah it is, no matter how positive and optimistic it is. At this point in time, I want to see freaking results. I want to see action. He actually had the audacity to say that things behind the scenes are going up. We're trending in the right direction. But from all for all intents and purposes, if it doesn't translate to wins, who the hell cares? Who the hell cares? The fans, the NFL only exists for entertainment, for fan entertainment. That is the only reason the NFL exists. If the fans are not entertained, there is no freaking point, right? We are not entertained. We are pissed off. We are demanding that the for the front office go and make changes, Anthony. So at this point in time, do you think that we've convinced John Mara and this, and this coaching staff, rather this upper management, that changes and wholesale changes need to be made. If general, if, if Joe judge was safe three weeks ago, I promise you he's not anymore. No, I, I don't think that John Mar has been convinced of anything. I think that he was already convinced that Dave Gettleman needs to leave. And I think that Dave Gettleman will be fired or have his retirement or whatever at the end of this upcoming week. But I don't think that he's convinced about the coaching staff. You know, if anything, I think, John Maher is probably convinced that the coaching staff should stay after that Joe Judge speech. We're all like, what the hell? I don't want to hear any more of this. I don't want this guy to coach the team next year. John Maher probably hears that and is like, this is why I chose this guy. He is such a leader. Look at the way he speaks with the media, not realizing that all of the media is like laughing at the head coach of the Giants right now because of that speech. That's what I probably think. You know, John Maher just sees it completely backwards from everybody else. He probably views this with like great pride, really loves that speech. And we're all just laughing at the speech and everyone's posting pictures of Joe Judge in clown makeup on Twitter. That's our response to that. But John Mara's response, I think, is just totally opposite. You know, I, I think it's weird that that report came out before the season was ended that Joe Judge was safe. You know, I think that the reporter that leaked that information, whatever source leaked that information, did Joe Judge no favors because now – it's it, everybody's talking point is how could Joe Judge be safe? Look at how much worse it's getting ever since we found out that he was safe, right? So hopefully the fact that that report came out and said he was safe, that might make the Giants reconsider that because it's gone so poorly ever since he was announced to be safe. That's one thing that I could think of. But really, honestly, I believe that report. I don't think John Morrow wants to make these wholesale changes. I think he's going to make a change at the general manager position. But you look at what Joe Judge just said yesterday in that 11 minute long speech. It's hard to believe that there aren't candidates for the general manager position that are going to say, no, I'm not taking this job if Joe Judge is there. He had to have scared away some candidates with this most recent outburst Joe Judge did. So I'm really thinking that that 11-minute speech was pretty damning for the Giants in their general manager search, and I don't think that John Maher is going to look at it that way. I think he's going to look at it as a reason to vote his confidence for Joe Judge and move forward with him. But, of course, like I said, I think that's backwards thinking and that the Giants, because John Maher is in ownership, probably not in good shape going forward as they haven't been for the past five years. Yeah, absolutely. But let's jump into these these quotes um, from the former players. Um, for I got I got really worked up and I got I go off track just like Joe Judge did during his 11 minute speech yesterday. I went off track a little bit. But here's what Scott Simonson, if you remember, tight end, reserve tight end for the Giants, 
um, for a couple seasons and spent two years with Dave Gettleman in uh, Carolina. This is what he had to say, and it's pretty freaking bad. He says, Dave Gettleman, and it, like by the way, he has no stake in this team anymore. He is not in the NFL. He's doing his own thing. Dave Gettleman is an atrocious GM and not a good person, in my opinion. The fact he's had this much time to not be good at his job while deciding others' fates and indebting one of the most historically respected franchises is embarrassing and also a strong example of karma existing. So, I mean, you couldn't find a more honest and truthful statement. I don't, th- I've never heard Scott Simonson come out and say anything like this. Um, it definitely took some life on Twitter and it was passed around a bunch. A lot of people were talking about it, but we're talking about a former player who spent four years with Gettleman saying that he is an atrocious GM and not a good person. We have heard many, 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 many players come out and say that Dave Gettleman is a scumbag and a snake. Uh, Notably, Josh Norman and D'Angelo Williams, both of them saying that he's a snake and a scumbag. I mean, look what he did to, I mean, leaving Landon Collins. I feel like he promised Landon Collins something because Collins was pissed off after that. Um, And he wanted revenge against the Giants. OBJ, we don't trade him to sign, we don't sign him to trade him. Lied about that, I think. You know, there's a lot of different things that Gettleman has said and done. Promised the fan base he would solve the offensive line. If there's anyone selling snake oil, guys, it's Dave Gettleman. Joe Judge, I mean, look, I definitely think Joe Judge has has made a lot of mistakes, and he's he's definitely not a good head coach at this point in time. But does Joe, does Joe Judge deserve the, the portion of the blame? I'm sure he absolutely does. Does Dave Gettleman deserve the majority of the blame? 100%. He was here two years before they hired Joe Judge. This roster was in a state of peril. It was a disaster. They tried to plug holes. Jerry Reese styled the end of his tenure with free agency. James Bradbury, Blake Martinez, you know, Adore Jackson, Kenny Galladay. They're just throwing players in there that may not even fit the scheme. And here's the difference though, right? I think that Blake Martinez, James Bradbury, Leonard Williams, they actually fit the scheme, right? Um, uh, Patrick Graham built a scheme that maximizes their strengths. And when things kind of were weird at the beginning of the season, they were playing a lot of cover one, putting James Bradbury in a lot of man coverage situations, and it wasn't working out. Patrick Graham said, okay, we have to adjust. He did that, and the Giants went on a string of games where their defense was playing lights out football. The offense, however, you go out, you draft Daniel Jones. You go out, you get Andrew Thomas. You go out, you get Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Tony, and it looks like they don't even know how to freaking use him. Kenny Galladay was used so poorly this year, I can't even tell you he didn't even have a catch at least I'm, as far as I'm concerned, maybe he had one catch against um, against the Bears. He had no catches. Your wide receiver one, you're playing $16, $17 million a season, had zero catches in a full game against a bad Bears team. That is just awful and a testament of how this this offense is completely given up and how the offense and, and the coaching staff has no idea how to use these players. Um, it, it's just every every single season there's more misses than hits and it's not for a lack of talent when you have guys who are playing at a high level and confident and, and, and things are working and, and the cylinders are clicking you act you extrapolate on their strengths you exploit and uh you know extract their talents and they maximize their their abilities but instead now we're seeing them hide their abilities you know their strengths are being pushed down into the abyss of the mariana trench where the giants currently reside and anthony when you're looking at this and what Scott Simonson said, and and and, and a former um, fullback for the Giants, Shane Smith, said he couldn't agree more. That's the second player. You know, when you're hearing former players say this about general manager De- Dave Gettleman, how is this making you feel? And, and obviously, it's affirming all the reports, the negativity that people have been saying and, and really spewing for, for months now. How does it make you feel that now players of the Giants are saying this? I'm not surprised by it personally. I mean, we've seen players from other teams come out and speak against Dave Gettleman. So, I, I mean, at, at the end of his reign here, it only goes to show, like, of course, more players are going to be speaking out against him because that's just the type of general manager he is. He burns a lot of bridges, and he creates a lot of bad relationships that come back to bite him. Like, this is not surprising. This has happened before. He's been a general manager in another position at another team, and he's failed there. So once he failed there, players spoke out against him. He's failing here. Players are going to speak out against him. That's just who he is. He's not a good general manager. And according to now, probably 10 to 15 people, he's also not a good person. That's just what we keep hearing from all these different people after they're done working with Dave Gettleman. They've got plenty of bad things to say. Nothing good. I don't think I've ever seen someone come out and say, I loved playing for Dave Gettleman. I loved Dave Gettleman. He was so great to me. I've never seen someone actually give great compliments to Dave Gettleman. And you know what? That doesn't surprise me either because his track record is bad. 
He's failed now with two teams as a general manager. If he goes on somewhere else and gets another high ranking position, I will be shocked because at this point, it really seems like he's ran himself not only off of the Giants front office board, but it seems like he's ran himself out of the league. Okay. Seems like Dave Gettleman, I mean, if he doesn't retire, if he is just fired and then he goes looking for more work, I have a really hard time believing he'll find any more work after this because it seems like after the Panthers gig, he shouldn't have found any more work. It seems like the only reason he found more work is because he was friends with John Mara, which is, of course, the nepotism that I bring up almost every single episode of John Mara. He can't stop just hiring his friends, treating it as a family business, putting his family members in high ranking positions. And I think that's one of the things that um someone said, one of those former players said, you know, how he just kind of brings it in family business uh, kind of thing. I think there was some criticism towards that aspect of John Mars, uh, you know, working with the Giants. And I know that plenty of media members are starting to catch on and expose that portion of John Mars workings and say all that stuff that I've been saying for so long, because that's really been the biggest problem with the New York Giants is that nepotism, is that family business structure where they just go for their buddies and make them the highest paid position players. I mean, it is really, really annoying because – and it's probably really damaging when you think about it because there's so many players and coaches who are relying on management to do a good job in order for them to be successful. Like if you think about all of the players that the Giants have brought in, think about Kenny Galladay, for example. Yeah, he got paid like crazy, but he probably still wants to have a successful football career, be here for the entirety of his contract and make all of the money on his contract. But because of the poor management from Dave Gettleman, now the poor coaching from Joe Judge, there's just so many layers to it, and now the players are being affected. So it's going to be money out of the players' mouths because there's going to be players like Jabril Peppers, for example, was great for the Giants early on this year, but now he's probably not getting another contract with the team. So Dave Gettleman really just uprooted him from the Browns for a couple of years just to have him get hurt and kind of ruin a portion of his career. So now it's going to be tough for Jabril Peppers to rebound. Maybe that's not the best example, but there are plenty of examples of players just having their lives affected by poor management within the New York Giants. And you got to keep in mind, guys, players are people. Yes, they're athletes. They make a lot of money, but they are human beings who have families, who have mothers, who have daughters, who have brothers, people that they take care of within playing the sport. And because the management is so bad for the New York Giants, all of those things that these people are trying to take care of is getting affected. All that stuff is getting affected by the poor management and poor coaching of the New York Giants. These players want to be successful. They want to win games, make the playoffs, earn the incentives on their contracts, but they're not being put into position to succeed. They're not being put into position to earn those incentives and earn that money. And it's really just damaging for all the people involved. The New York Giants are just really just hurting people's lives. And I mean, even think about the media, right? The media is having a tough time. We all get pissed off at the media because the media is always trying to spin some annoying or negative narrative. What else are they supposed to do? The Giants are just bad and there's a no good narrative to spin. There's nothing good to talk about with Dave Gettleman. All you can do really is just talk about how bad they are. That's all we've been doing is just talking about how bad the Giants are. So the Giants aren't really even giving us any choice, any options. They don't give the media any options anyway. So I, just top to bottom, guys, like I've been saying, there's so much wrong with the New York Giants right now. And yes, we can pinpoint Joe Judge has been bad at coaching this year. We can pinpoint Dave Gettleman has been bad at the general man manager position for years, ever since he got it with the Giants. But the main thing that we need to pinpoint is that John Mara is running his family business into the ground. He inherited the New York Giants and he has done a terrible job with them. Ever since he's taken over as the lead owner of the team, he has absolutely ran this team into the ground. It is so painful, so heartbreaking to watch happen. And I really hope that soon enough, the New York Giants make the necessary changes to take some of the power away from John Mara and put the power back into people who deserve the power so we can finally fix this freaking team and make the New York Giants competitive again. Yeah, why can't we change the Giants uh, ownership base, kind of like the Green Bay Packers, where we get to own shares and we can... Uh, vote and stuff. That'd be kind I of wish, cool. man. I wish. <laughs> we, John Mara would be gone before you could even vote. It would be just be like freaking instantaneous launch yeah, tre and, via trebuchet. And I'll say, like, a lot of people are like, oh, you can't fire ownership, though. We can make as many changes as we want, but you can't fire ownership. If John Mara was smart enough, he would go ahead and de facto fire himself, right? Because right now he is vice president of the Giants. Like, he is president of the operations of the Giants. He can hire someone to do that job for him. He can take the people that are smart enough, competent enough, and really good at that portion of the job, have them do it. He can pay someone to do that. 
he owns the New York Giants. He's a multi-billionaire. He can hire somebody to run the New York Giants for him while he just profits off of the Giants. He can just sit back, relax, and make money off of the team. He does not need to be involved in hiring general managers or anything. He chooses to be because he thinks it's in the best interest of the Giants. Clearly, it is not in the best interest of the Giants and the hundreds and the millions of people that this affects. It is not in the best interest for John Marr to continue to run this team. So, yes, he could continue to own the team, but he doesn't need to continue to own it. It's sooner or later he needs to wake up and realize that, give the power to somebody else who's competent and knows what they're doing, and let them run the team, hire the general manager, hire the coaching staff, and go from there. Just use John Marr's money. He could still profit off of the team and be the owner of the Giants, but he needs to stop taking control of things because that's why the Giants have been so bad all these years. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is, though, if we're talking realistically, he's not going to do that. You know what I mean? He is going to stay exactly where he is because he likes to have the power. You know what I mean? He likes the power. Um, mm-hmm. And it wasn't until, you know, the Giants uh, or the NFL forced George Young on the Giants and they finally he hires Bill Parcells and the Giants turned things around because they actually had a football mind running the organization. Now, I, you know, I'm reading some quotes. I'm, I'm, I'm sifting through old Dave Gettleman quotes, like trying to find some information. And I found something interesting. And I think you might appreciate this. So somebody asked him, why don't you talk publicly more and take accountability when things are going wrong? Now, you remember the other day when when uh, Pat Hanlon, the Giants like PR guy, was out on Twitter attacking a uh, former scout, right? Now, I didn't realize this, but I think Dave Gettleman and Pat Hanlon are really close. I think they're really close because – this is what happened a couple – I think it was 2019, right? The Giants suck. And, and somebody asks him uh, – somebody asks Dave Gellman why he doesn't take more accountability. And he basically says, you know, GMs don't go out and talk, right? I Even when we were winning – we went to the Super Bowl. Like I was behind the scenes. I didn't say anything. Um, but he said – but then he goes around to say this. I felt guilty that Pat, who was Pat Shermer at the time, was up there taking the bullets. So I turned around and had Pat Hanlon go around the league and see what people were doing to see if GMs – um, talked in season this year and if it was in and why they talked in season and basically they came to the conclusion that GMs only talked if it was a big deal and that was it so Dave Gettleman decided I'm not going to talk um, but he specifically asked Pat Hanlon to go and do this for him so I wonder if there is some sort of connection between those two where Pat Hanlon was being very very aggressive on Twitter to protect Dave Gettleman because the scout was going after Dave Gettleman specifically saying that he was an awful general manager that uh, the entire organization needs to be overhauled in, in ways um, you know, that are pretty extreme. But, you know, the fact that I, I, I stumbled upon this quote that Dave Gettleman and Pat Hanlon clearly have some sort of relationship with this, which is understandable considering they work together. Um, but I wonder if that is a very strong relationship. And, and a lot of people, Dave Gettleman's kind of found his way into a, a boys club within the Giants and made it really hard for him to get fired. And that's why they're letting him retire because he's I guess maybe become friends with a lot of people or was already friends with people in the organization. Cause otherwise personally, I feel like the entire front office and upper management ownership is giving me that straight up middle finger right now as a fan that Dave Gettleman has not been fired. I feel like they're flipping me off all day long. And I just have to sit there and freaking watch the steam shit pile of a team and organization that is currently uh, trotting out players under the field on Sunday to get blown up by backup Andy Dalton and the bears. Okay. That is really what's happening here. I feel like they're flipping me off because Dave Gettleman is still on this team. Now, we're the ones that put billions of dollars into John Mara's pocket. We're the ones that are, you know, bringing attention to this team and keeping his team relevant, you know, along with all the other content creators and media members. You know what I mean? We're doing a hard job, a really, a really difficult job to do that. And they're just putting a, just straight up flipping us off in return. And, you know, it's, it's kind of disappointing to see like how, you know, we, Anthony and I have been doing this for what three years now been doing this for three years and all we have to show for is three just abysmal seasons and it's just like I don't even care anymore like like I'm just trying to figure out how they can get out of this and it really starts like what you said Anthony um, John Mara figuring out for himself that he needs to get rid of some of the power and give some power to other people and not rely on his nephew or his cousin um, or Dave Gettleman who's like a good buddy um, you know I, I don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know what what Joe Judge is talking about when he says, you know, behind the scenes things are changing and, and, and we're going in the right direction. I have no idea what he's talking about. You know, like because from my perspective, you have employees fighting on Twitter. We have former players shitting on the organization and your general manager. What exactly is Joe Judge doing aside from giving, you know, the, the cafeteria members an additional bonus, which is really awesome from him. But that does nothing for the fans. That does nothing for the players on the, on the field. It does nothing for the product that he promised us when he was hired two years ago. 
Um, but if I was a betting man, I'd say that Joe Judge has about a 50-50 shot of being here next season, Anthony. What what numbers would you give it? Would you give it a 50-50 or do you think it's, gonna, it's actually lower than that? You think Dave Gettleman has a 50-50 shot? No, no, no. Joe Judge. Joe Judge. Joe Judge, I think, has probably a 70-30 shot. I do think that he's going to be back next year. I think that the reports of Joe Judge being safe are true. And I don't think that, like I said, even though those the rants that he just went on look really damning to us, the media members, the fans, look super damning. I think that that was what John Maher is going to put his vote of confidence in. I think that he liked that rant. I, I really do. And unfortunate to say, but John Maher is just incompetent. We can all agree on that. So I think it's a 70-30 chance that Joe Judge returns. I think he's got a very strong chance of returning. And I really don't foresee the Giants making that change, even though they probably should. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, the last three games, if they get blown out by Washington, who's really struggling right now, it, it's going to put his odds at a pretty low uh, favor, of, I would imagine. I mean, um, I mean, I mean, considering the fact that he, like, what did he say yesterday? He was like, my, at least my players aren't punching them, aren't punching each other on the sideline. Meanwhile, you have a Kadarius Tony like punching a Dallas player in the middle of a game. Um, there have been multiple fights this year. The, the Giants are not void of of disaster. I don't know. Like he's he's finding like like he he's finding solace in factors that don't mean anything. He's justifying the retention. He's like trying to save face by saying his team isn't fighting each other. Oh, sorry, you're just the worst team in football. I don't give a shit. If, if I was the Ram, I mean, look at the Rams. I mean, Jalen Ramsey and Tyler Rapp punched, like, I think they actually punched each other yesterday during the game, but they won the game and they're fine and they're chilling. And, you know, sometimes competitiveness gets the best of you when you want to be the best, but the Giants don't even look like they give a shit out there. So, you know, you got Logan Ryan dropping interceptions in the end zone. It, it's just a disaster. Lack of lack of execution is just bad. The leadership is not there. The offense doesn't have a leader. Saquon Barkley's waving his hands around. He doesn't give a shit anymore. He's he's trying to do something, but, you know, it, it's, it's all for naught because the offensive line is garbage. So I can't wait to get into draft stuff. We have one more week of this hellhole, and then we can finally look to the future, and hopefully the Giants make some big, big changes that can put us in the right direction. But make sure to like and subscribe the episode below low on youtube my friends hope you enjoyed the episode taking a look at some really daunting and devastating uh measures uh the giants uh, former players and employees are taking and whatnot but let us know what your thoughts are below in the comment section and we'll catch you guys on the next fireside giants episode mm-hmm.